Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. Hey, it's Dave Asprey with Bulletproof Radio. Today's cool fact of the day is that if you feel cold as like physically painful instead of just as a temperature, it might be because cold targets the same nerve receptors in your body that react to the spiciness of say mustard or garlic. And those receptors are part of your body's pain system. They're actually the substance P receptors. And it is not true that substance P makes you go P. That's different. <laughs> Before we get into today's show, let's talk for a minute about bulletproof collagen gelatin because you're going to be hearing all about gelatin and collagen, but you won't necessarily know what happens when you have them brought together. Collagen gelatin is something that I made because I love making desserts. The problem is that when I make desserts, I only get a tiny bit of gelatin in them and then they gel. If you put enough gelatin in to be biologically useful, they're like rock hard like Knox blocks. So collagen gelatin lets you double the amount of collagen protein you use in a dessert recipe and still get the same amount of gelatinization, if that's a word. And you get... You know, it is now. <laughs> gelatinization -ish -ish. There you go. All right. Uh, today's guest is Kellyanne Petrucci, who's a board certified naturopathic physician and a certified nutritional consultant. And she just wrote Dr. Kellyanne's Bone Broth Diet, which was published by Rodale, uh, right about a week after Bulletproof the Cookbook was published, which also had a bone broth diet in it. So since we're friends, and since we both like bone broth, it was kind of like an obvious thing that we should talk. Yeah, uh, for sure. Also, Kellyanne, you wrote Living Paleo for Dummies, which is one I of the best-selling dummies books of all time, which is really cool. Yeah, but it's very cool. What was the worst selling dummies book of all time? Uh, I, you know, that's a really good question. But I had, I, I did have one stinker of my own. Okay, do tell me. <laughs> we we all have them. I have to tell <laughs> you. So I wrote a book called Boosting Immunity for Dummies. So all my books, they were, they were all bestsellers except for this one, Boosting Immunity. See, no one cared. <laughs> no one wow. cared about boosting their immunity. <laughs> well, speaking of bestsellers, I am really. I've got my fingers crossed. For you to be on the New York Times list, oh. I can tell you, Bulletproof the Cookbook sold twenty-seven thousand copies. We, the New York Times, wow. only counted eleven thousand copies, and we I had the same thing. We did not make the list because apparently Chloe uh, Kardashian, who sold four thousand yes. copies, did make the list. So I don't understand yes. how the New York Times list works because it's not based on how much you sell. But okay. I, I've been working so. out my butt a lot. I'm trying to get more round back there. That might help my numbers. I don't know what else to do, but. Okay, so I have a very similar story. In fact, my story was actually so profound and incredulous that the Huffington Post picked it up. Oh, wow. I did, a, I did a blog post on the whole scenario, and it was really so crazy. Two hours later, the Huff Post picked it up, did an article on it, because uh, it's just nuts. I had so many bizarre things happen, but one of the things I have to tell you about, and this is not me whining, because I actually think it's very funny, and I believe that and I can overcome just about anything, the list has its voodoo. And I know that I have a great book. I know I put my time in. I know I, know I did everything I could do. But I have to tell you, <laughs> we had, uh, so my books ran out in an hour from Amazon. Whoa. And so I was very upset. I thought, you know, what happened here? Where are my books? Why weren't, you know, why, why didn't we have enough? It turns out that the truck driver <laughs> no. that was leaving the fulfillment going to Amazon that truck driver actually decided that he wanted a different career path. So he parked the truck, abandoned the truck with my books in it. Oh my God. True story. I mean, it's a true story. And abandoned my books. So you know, Amazon never got my books. And so once they located the truck, the books, all of that, the problem is you have to actually make an appointment with Amazon to have the books loaded in. And this is their busiest time of year. So oh, no. I had no books for a couple of days. So it was a, you know, a bit of a drag. This just happened. Just happened. Oh my just, god! Just, just past week, yeah. So my book hasn't even been released a full week yet. So yeah, it's crazy. Fingers crossed that you make the list. I uh, I sure hope so. And it's yeah. you've already been on the New York Times list, so being on twice is a I'm, lot less important than being on once. But still, it, well, I got to like, tell you, you want you want that baby. You oh yeah, <laughs> you of course. Just gotta have it. <laughs> well, so let's let's uh, let's hope that. But before we talk, yeah. before we talk, uh -huh. I got to ask you something. Mm -hmm. Now I know my star, Brian, you know, shines bright. But why are you wearing sunglasses? Oh, 
so most people are probably listening on iTunes and they uh, they don't know. I'm wearing these lightly tinted sunglasses. These are my Erlen lenses. And Helen Erlen's been on the show a couple times. Uh, she's a good friend. And she just came up to Bulletproof Labs and she trained me on how to spot the approximately one in two people who has a lot of brain strain that comes from the light around them. So these are a very carefully designed custom tint for my eyes that like doubles my energy every day. So I don't have to wear these, but when I do, I have like a lot more energy. And since I've been sitting underneath these harsh studio lights all day long, it's the end of the day. I'm like, you know what? I'm going for the rock star look. Energy, good. Rock star, good. Yeah. Dave Asprey and hot looking glasses, good. Uh, these are better than my orange ones. That was my last color. Those those looked a little bit dorky, but these I hear are okay. But yeah, they're okay. They're they're anti dork. Anti dork, sweet. My dork. Got it. My dork prevention is up. <laughs> So let's talk about bone broth because it's yes. kind of all the rage and there's bone broth cafes opening up. Uh, the Bulletproof Coffee Shop in Santa Monica, we always have bone broth from grass-fed bones and it's a hot seller. People are always coming in. They just want a cup of it like a cup of Bulletproof coffee and we even do like a Bulletproof bone broth where we add upgraded collagen and we add brain octane and you're like, Love wait, that. what is this, right? So you have a whole book about bone broth. Why, why did you go down, okay, bone broth, you could have had a book about anything. Why did you pick this I, I one? I could have. Well, I have to tell you, this stems from being in practice for over 20 years. And Dave, I've been around everything from spray vitamins to every magical elixir from every part of the planet you could imagine. I really have seen it all because I've had a very nutrition-based practice. My, my practice has been really based on food and nutrition and so people sit down and they talk to me, I tap into them, I listen to what they need. And so many times what my patients respond to best is simply food. So about nine years ago, I started using something called bone broth. I call it my one thing. So if you were to dilute and, and extract probably one of the most profound and important things that I've ever used in practice to get results for my patients it's been bone broth. And, you know, I did not discover bone broth, make that clear. I am rediscovering <laughs> bone broth. You're, you're the Al Gore of bone broth. I got it. I'm the Al Gore broth. <laughs> Absolutely. Because, you know, it's been around forever and ever. And we have used it for so many reasons. We, you know, mostly we have used it because it's so economical and it's so hearty and it's so delicious. And it's, you know, we're using all parts of the animal. And there's just, there's so many reasons why we use bone broth, but I use it in my practice for this reason. People came into my practice and they said, you know what? They came in with thick files, threw them on the desk. I've been everywhere. I've been everywhere. I cannot lose this weight. Mm -hmm. And when I do lose the weight, I pack it back on. Right. Why in the God's earth am I aging so fast? I don't like how this is going down. I don't want to age this quickly. I don't feel as well as I should. I'm on medications. I don't want to be on these medications and I'm tired of the side effects. I have achy joints. I have cancer, heart disease, diabetes, one of the modern day diseases. You know, I'm obese. I have achy joints that just won't go away. Every day I wake up with achy joints. I guess I'm supposed to have these achy joints. I have autoimmune problems. You know, my thyroid's you know, all whacked out. I have all kinds of intestinal problems. I have bloating. I'm constipated, this, that my skin is not right, you know, I have psoriasis. There's so many reasons why these patients came in. And what was so fascinating to me in my exploration of bone broth, it was the one thing that made the difference with everything. So what I did was I, I, I backtracked and I thought, why is it that this is working for everything? And what I realized is that to answer all of my patients' problems, because I, I really what I'm in the, is the solutions business and I had to come up with solutions. And what I found was I need to find a way to number one, heal people's gut. I need to find a way to number two, get inflammation out of the body. And number three, I need to find a way to help people become a fat burning machine. And so bone broth delivered all of that. And so what I did was I put it in a system and that system is in Dr. Kellyanne's bone broth diet. Why does bone broth do all that stuff? Huh. Well, it's got some amazing deep nutritional factors in bone broth, but the overriding factor is this. When you flood 
your cells, because everything happens on a cellular level, it's so important. When you flood your cells with what it needs, because you see we're starving. We are starving out there. I don't care what you see with your eyes, how, you know, how someone looks exteriorly on the inside, and this is having done phase angles and all this testing on so many patients for so many years, I can tell you we're starving for nutrition. And when you flood the cells with nutrition and the toxins are out of the nutrition, uh, out of the cells, you create a really profitable system in your body. And it just absorbs everything and metabolizes everything. And so the basic premise behind bone broth is that it creates really healthy cells. And much of that is because it heals your gut. And that doesn't sound sexy to people. It doesn't sound sexy. You know, if I tell people, look, you want to lose that weight, I'm going to get you really healthy. They don't want to hear that. They say, you know, speed dial. What are you talking? You had me at weight loss. They want to hear about that. And what I say is, listen, how would you feel if I told you you, you can have both and you can have both in 21 days. And I stand by that 21 day number. And the reason why is because our bodies are so regenerative and we're, our cells are constantly turning over and our intestinal cells turn over in 21 days. And I'm here to tell everyone that if you give your body the right raw material and you flood your body with the nutrition it's starving for, that at the end of that 21 days, you're going to make a huge difference in your gut health. And guess what? You're going to make a huge difference in your weight because the way your body responds to everything is going to be different. There's some recent studies that just came out that, that are really cool. They're looking at the way different people respond to the same foods. And like, yes. oh, that's funny. You give, uh, you know, uh, white potatoes to this guy, and they're going to be low glycemic. And you give it to this woman over here, it's going to be high glycemic. And it appears to be mediated largely by the gut bacteria, maybe something in the mm -hmm. is something in your your genetics as yes. well. But that there's no such thing as really a high glycemic or a low glycemic food. You can do an average, but the average means that for you, you just might not be average. And it seems like with something like bone broth, when you get this out there, what you're doing is you're modulating the bacteria in the gut, but you're also making it so the gut itself can absorb nutrients better because you're, you're healing the gut. And when it absorbs nutrients better, it'll partition energy differently in the body. It will partition energy. And we are going to hear so much more about this microbiome. We're going to hear so much more about this internal environment, the system that we have. And if, if I can get everyone to just think about and you know, visualize the fact that while we have 60 trillion cells in our body, we have a hundred trillion of these microbes, these bugs that we have to take care of, that we have to keep in balance. And it's so crucial. It's so important to everything. And last spring, about a year ago, they did a study and they examined the gut bacteria of twins. One was fast, one was skinny, and they transported the bacteria into mice. And of course, what do you think happened? The mice with the fat bacteria grew fat. And the opposite with the skinny, they the the mice stay slim. In fact, that, that's so, in that's in the bulletproof diet. How funny that I quoted that. Is study. it? Yeah. See, see, smart, we, we smart think, brain. We, we think the same way. Here. That's right. So, uh, so it was, it's it's really so. What I'm saying is the science is really there, mm -hmm. proving that if you want to be slimmer, if you want to be younger, if you want to be healthier, so much of that does really truly come from gut health. So, getting back to bone broth. I, in my practice, I have found that bone broth has made an incredible difference. It's made my job so much easier. It's made my job so much easier because it really does heal the gut and people enjoy it. And when you put in the system that I put, put the broth in, you really do become younger so quickly, so quickly. And people say things like, oh my gosh, you mean it really was food the whole time? I was you know, on all these medications. I felt this way. I felt that. And it really came down to food. And so oftentimes, you know, it, it, it can with the right nutrition and the right food. You know, so many solutions are there. They're just, they're just, they're there. It, is this about the protein or is this about the minerals that's in it? It's both. It's yeah. absolutely both. So minerals, every channel of our body, we have all of these channels, these biofeedback mechanisms in our body, and they are really, they are really at the hands of minerals. So when we don't have the right minerals in our body, structures and functions don't work as they should. If people just realized all of these channeling, including our heart, I mean, so many things are so dependent on these minerals, that mineral deficiency is so vitally dangerous 
It's so vitally dangerous. And there really has to be just that beautiful balance, just that beautiful balance. And that's why I love another reason why I love the bone broth, because, you know, you've got the protein in there. You've got all of that. You know, you, you've got the, the ability to heal the gut through the gelatin. And there's just there's so many beautiful things that you get from the bone broth that make a huge difference in lowering that inflammation and in healing the gut. And, and if you sip on soups and broth studies show, Penn State actually did a study showing this, that just by incorporating these soups and broths in your diet, you can weigh up to 10 pounds less a year. And I have to tell you, a big part of the way I control my weight is through having broths. I sip on broths a lot of times and you just simply, it, it floods your body with that nutrition. And again, when your cells are satisfied with nutrition, when, they're, when they have what they need, you crave less. You just, you crave less. That's how your body works. Yep. You can have cravings because of micronutrients. You can have cravings because of blood sugar. You can have cravings yep. because of toxins or emotional stressors. And you've just kind of got to go through with and just play whack-a-mole. Those like, well, you it, figure it out the reason and just stop them. And I, I mean, I, <laughs> I honestly believe this. If you have a food craving, it's your fault. It's absolutely mm -hmm. your fault. And it, and I and I agree with that because yeah. you, you should go through and name them again because that's very interesting. So you why can, do people have food cravings? Say that again because that's because people want to know that. All right. So one of them is mineral deficiencies, which you can mm -hmm. address at least in part with bone broth. You probably want to eat yep. some liver and egg yolks and stuff like that too. But all right. So yeah, egg yolks, right, exactly. Yeah. So, so there's a mineral deficiency or other de deficiencies. It could be vitamins. It could be fatty acids. But but you didn't get a core thing you needed. You can have a glucose, like a blood sugar fluctuation. You can have uh, emotional issues, like you can have cravings because you know you, you feel lonely and, and things like that. And they can mm -hmm. also be caused by toxins or anything that's a stressor on your body. But if you eat a toxin accidentally, or you breathe a toxin, your body's like, give me sugar. I need sugar to process the toxin. So that causes a food craving. And so there's all these things that are out there. And if you realize that there's always a reason, food, food cravings never just happen. If there's a reason, it was something you had control of, but you just didn't know. So it's really empowering to think about that, but it's also kind of annoying because it means you might need to do some digging. But I have gone through, like I haven't had food cravings in so long, I barely remember what it's like, but as a obese guy, I totally, like I was just, I lived with food cravings all the time when I weighed that 300 pounds. And even as I lost you know, 50 or 80 of those pounds, I still had food cravings. When I got down to the normal weight, I still had them, not as bad, but it was that idea of just kind of going through and saying, all right, like, let's address these. And a lot of the time, it's just an energy deficiency. So I, I'm, a, yeah, that, I'm a fan of bone broth to do that. Oh. Yeah. All right. So and did you know I read, I read research, by the way, just to, to end that conversation, that a craving actually only lasts about four minutes. So if you have a, put a healthy fat, eat, grab a healthy fat, if you really have a craving or you can distract yourself in some way, in about four minutes, it will go away. What's the difference between... Uh, quote, a craving and hunger, like actual hunger. Yeah, well, that's something that you really, again, how you say like you got to whack it and figure it out. It's the same thing with this. You really have to come in tune with your body because hunger is very different. Mm -hmm. So when you have a craving, it's more of a spike, okay? It, what I tell pe people is it's more, you, you really feel almost like a loony feeling. It's a crazy feeling. I call it cravings and crashes, that's what you feel. When you have hunger, it's, it's a calmer feeling. You feel that more at your core. It's, a very, it's an empty feel. So one is an empty feel because your body needs those healthy fats. It's craving for those fats to get back in, in, into to your body. It needs that stabilization. Whereas a craving is very different because that's more of a spike. That's more of a, 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 a you know reaction that your blood sugar is having, and it's more of where you feel that craziness. It's a very different thing. One is crazy, and one is more stabilizing, but it's deeper. It's deeper in the core, and you can really feel that you know in in your gut an empty feeling. Let's talk about how you make bone broth because you have a bunch of recipes in Dr. Kellyanne's bone broth diet. Do and. I have some serious doubts and questions about the proper way to make it because. Oh, I know you do, Dave. <laughs> I mean, well, I, we've, we've talked before. I know you do. <laughs> I'm precise on these things. And I mean, I, I have a restaurant. You're much more precise. You're much more precise than I am. And I have a, look, we just have to talk about this. All right. 
I think that you're more precise than I am because I'm just being straight up. I have seen so many patients and what people oftentimes are willing to do, you have to sometimes meet them. And when oh, yeah. I hear what they're actually eating all of the time, I know that sometimes I have to step back because in my own life, I'm very precise. That's the truth. And you know, if you can, as precise as you can be, the more beautiful, the more better, the, you know, the, the more, the more responsive your body's going to be, the better the, the, the environment's going to be, the better the world's going to be. It's hu- it makes a huge difference. So, but I try with my patients and, and this is part of my tapping in experience, but I really do, I sit down and I really do try to feel where they are and what they need. And, and, and I, oftentimes I tell them, you know, what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. So I don't placate, I don't bend, but sometimes I know that I just have to get people getting good stuff in their body way better than where they are. One of the the things that set the Bulletproof Diet apart from uh, a lot of the other books out there was that it, there's a spectrum. It's like, like, these are really good, these are maybe okay, and these are like really bad. And I know that if you're going to have a, a cheat day, which I'm not a fan of, have a carb refuel day, but eat the good stuff. And so you don't have to, you don't have to be perfect, but knowing perfect means that you can more easily take steps in that direction. I absolutely, so. and that's why I love the Bulletproof Diet. That's why so many of my patients have received the Bulletproof Diet from me. Oh, thank I you. I give them as a gift, and that's why I'm a huge proponent. You can see it on my bookshelf because um, I believe in that I believe in that philosophy. You know I'm a huge believer in all of your work, all of your products. I stand behind anything that you do because of this precision that you do have. Well, and I think it's important for people to have a benchmark. And so, you know, I'm a believer in that. I'm a believer of, you know, and I tell pa- patients that all the time. This is where the power comes. When you know how to build a plate and you know the foods, that, that precision of food, you know where you need to go back to. You know where you need to be. And your personal play is your personal play, but there's no more aimlessness. There's no more, there's no more cheat. It's a choice. You know, you're not cheating. You're choosing yep. because you, so many people walk around. They truly don't know. I mean, that's what I see when people come to see me is they don't know. And so what the Bulletproof Diet is all about is now you know. So, so now if, you know. if you take that philosophy that, that says, all right, you don't have to be perfect, but you might as well know where it is. Paint for me the most perfect, perfectly made bone broth on the planet. How would you make it? Well, that's easy because... I would say the only thing that you could do wrong if you wanted to have that absolute precision is you don't get the highest quality pasture raised product that you could possibly get. So you have got to make sure that the protein source that you use is absolutely beautifully grass fed, pristine, extremely healthy, raised well. That's the, that's what you have to do. That is. So I tell people, you have to remember, the healthier the food, it does transfer in so many ways. The food that you eat transfers in your body, and even energetically, I believe, and that's a whole other conversation, but I think all of this is very important. It's important if you understand what's happening with our planet and our world and everything else. All of these things are really important. But if you were to say to me, Nothing is, you know, no, nothing is too hard for me. Nothing is a hardship. I want to make the absolute best bone broth in, in the world. I would say get the best animal source you can. Absolutely. Okay. So you start with the best bones. What do you, you start with? What, what's the absolute best bones that you can use, whatever it is. So I don't get too caught up. What, what you want to do is if beef, you know, really good ones, oxtail, short rib, you know, shank, these are really good bones for broth. Uh, and so even chicken, if you can get a really good pasture raised rotisserie chicken, I, I can get them easily because I farms all over where I am. You know, it, it's whatever works for you, but just get the absolute best, 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 best protein source that you can. And okay. all you have to do is I believe that I think the slow cooker, absolute, like this, the slow cooker makes the absolute best bone broth. It cooks at really a low temperature over a long period of time, and that's what you want. You want to put the bones, and you can leave some okay. meat on there if you like for some flavor. Depends right. what your jam is. 
So if you use the oxtail short rib shank, it's got some meat on there. You put some water over that. Why the water? Really, uh, well, the water is going to make the broth. So that water is going to make I it mean, so it's like a soup like. It, so it's going to make I mean, it like it's soup. You said over it. Do you need to cover them all the way? Like so I, about an inch. Uh, about so an inch over the top. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so whatever you put in the pot. So a, a really good base would be you put the bones in, mm -hmm. and then you put celery, onions, and carrots. So really good base for people. That's going to give you that delicious kind of homegrown soupy type of taste that we're used to. And then from there, what I say is, then it's your jam. So if you like lemongrass because it makes you feel like you're on a beach in Bali, you love that aroma, you love that flavor, spices, go for it. Go for it. Whatever it is that you like and you want to add, you add in the pot. But okay. just make sure that that water is about an inch over everything that you put in. And then from that point, I actually use, a lot of people use apple cider vinegar. Mm -hmm. I actually use lemon juice. What's the difference? I, Why? Uh, well, the apple cider vinegar for some people, you know, the way it breaks down can be a problem. And so some people report that, you know, they report back to me that it can give them a headache. <clears throat> it doesn't make them feel well. And those people that have those problems, it, and it has to do, we, we talk about this with bone broth, like, you know, I'm having a reaction to bone broth. How can I have a reaction to bone broth? Well, it has to do with glutamine and glutamate and how your body breaks these things down and your blood brain barrier, how it goes through. So the bottom line is this, if you have a lot of toxins in your body and if you have a sick gut, sometimes apple cider vinegar and sometimes the broth itself can trigger things like headaches or make you not feel 100%, you know, like, you know, when this you, just doesn't feel right. It's, it's not, it's not feeling right to me. And so the answer to that is a lot of, a lot of people, you have to not cook it as long. I mean, that's because all the, the glutamate, okay. all of these things, you know, the amino acids, they come out more, the more that you cook it, the more these things come out. So, so the glutamate forms when you have vinegar, acetic acid mm -hmm. in it, and you have mm -hmm. Uh, basically, th this uh, glutamate, which is a very, very common amino acid that's a protein building yep. block. And when they combine over time, when you get glutamine and acid, you get monosodium glutamate. And Voila. naturally occurring, that really super brothy flavor. In fact, if you buy bullion cubes, which is supposed yep. to be like bone broth, it's basically just MSG. Yeah. So that's an interesting thing that what is healthy, if you overcook it, or you make the wrong acid level in it, or use the wrong kind of acid, you actually can make something that tastes amazing, but doesn't make you feel as good as it otherwise could. Okay. Yes, so that's so. if you're one of those people, you need the slow progression path. Okay. So you have to wait a while, let your body get used to it, see how your body does, because you want to heal your gut, because usually it's people, that the two groups of people that oftentimes have the most problem with this, well, I should say three. People who are B6 deficient is one. People who have a sick gut, that's two. We need to build that gut back up. And autistic children. Uh, those three groups, and again, with autistic children, oftentimes it's because we need to work on healing the gut a little bit more. So slow progression. Slow progression. And I also recommend that you use lemon juice. There are a lot of the paleo cooks out there that don't even use any apple cider vinegar. They don't use or any vinegars of any kind, or they don't even use the lemon juice. So that's, it's not a must. It just, just dissolves the bones a little bit more. So everything comes out, but it's not a, it, for a lot of chefs. They don't even use it at all. So okay. if you have one of those issues, it's just a matter of progression, slow, take it easy, that type of thing. Here's the other two questions for you. Yeah. Do you roast the bones? You scare me with these questions. Right. We're going to dig deep. All right. <laughs> do you roast the bones first or do you just put them in the water? Uh, you can roast the bones first. That depends. It depends on what kind of flavor you like. If you like a heartier flavor, uh, you can roast the bones. I don't. I don't care to do that. I, it, I, it's not necessary for me for flavor and it's not going to really do anything in terms of health. Uh, and I also, in getting back to flavor, I, I want to spin that into something else. If you're new to bone broth, what I find is that most people do best starting with chicken broth, the chicken bone broth, because it's a little milder and it has a, a milder aroma. And people tend to, that I see, 
tend to like chicken and then they move on to the beef and they're quite happy. But if you're new to this, that maybe you may want to start with chicken just because it's a little milder taste. If it doesn't taste good, you, you put the bone broth in a, in a blender and just add a couple scoops of ice cream, just blend it right up. Okay. <laughs> maybe not. Uh, <laughs> Okay, I don't know. Do you, are you coming out with an ice cream you're trying to promote? Uh, yeah, bone broth ice cream. That just sounds incredibly yeah, not no. good. But there may be someone out I there. I, I would do it. We have an ice cream maker, like a super hand one at the Bulletproof coffee shop. And we do, uh, Bulletproof get some ice cream. You probably could do a savory ice cream. Like if you like scooped it, like you would guacamole on top of a soup or something that would like melt in and be like creamy and delicious. You could hide it. it you could totally hide it. it. It's a challenge. It's it has to be turkey or chicken. You can't yeah. have it. Yeah, horseradish flavored bone broth ice cream would probably be legit. But that brings up <laughs> another question. Okay, I would say don't roast the bones because you're going to oxidize the fats and you're probably damaging the protein. Yes. And when you cook, you could. when you cook underwater, you you make less crap. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I I don't know. I'm I'm not sure about that. I've heard I, and I've read. Uh, I just. For me, I just don't think it's necessary. I don't know how that came into the clay of bone broth. I don't know where that came in. Uh, somehow in the paleo community, roasting the bones became a thing. I, I, it's, just, it's just not necessary. It's an extra step. Let's keep this simple, easy. And like you said, there, you know, there, there may even be issues with it taking away from the health properties of the broth. So why bother? I'd say leave it out. I would say leave it out as well. I, I, there is a flavor thing, but for me... The food should taste really good. You should get a food high when you're done eating it, but the roasting of it probably is going to, at least in some people, reduce the incidence of the high. Like I think there's a little bit more goodness that comes from cooking the bones in water versus in air. Yes. So. Yes. All right. Next question. When you yep. when you boil bones, there's a lot of people who've never done it, but I think that you, you might find that there's uh, it's, it's simple to do this if you get the bones. When you boil bones, the marrow is going it's fat. The fat rises to the surface. And I've asked Chris Masterjohn about this as well, um, who's one of like the Weston A. Price uh, inspired uh, kind of paleo nutrition research. Oh, I've known well, yes. So yep. lost respect. Very smart Chris. guy. Yeah, really, really like what he has to say. Um, but what's your take on it? I mean, should we be like gobbling up all those precious fats? Should we like have a straw? Like, like how does that work? What do I do with my bone broth I can fat? Tell you, I can tell you that most of the patients, they skim it off. Okay. Um, uh, they they it's too it's got too much of a dense greasy feel to them mm -hmm. and they can't do it so a really interesting thing is to cook marrow separately mm -hmm. to have to do the marrow separately and then to add it in uh, that that people like much much better so you pop the marrow out of the bone you cook yep. it separately how do you cook it just like yep. fry it in a pan or something just fry it you can fry it right. just over in a, in a skillet super easy mm -hmm. super easy doesn't take long at all and most people like that better I, I prefer to do it that way. Oh, I think yeah. you get the most out of the marrow. The marrow is so beautiful. It, you know, it really does build your blood so beautifully. Marrow is one of the gifts. I tell you, it's such a gift. Having marrow is such a gift that you want to get all of that and to skim it off. It's just when you make it with the broth, it's just really difficult for yep. people to, to, to deal with. So I don't want you to miss out on it. So I say cook it separately. It's so easy. And then pop it in, or you know, eat it separately. Whatever, whatever your deal is. I, I also have some yeah. concerns about potentially damaging the fast by cooking it for a long period of time. Yes. And Chris yeah. Master John did too. And and you know, we're, on one hand we like fat, on the other hand we don't want damaged fat. We want raw fat. So, uh, like you, one of the most amazing things you can do is you get that marrow out. My kids love marrow. They always like. I don't say they I'm fight too. me for it, but they steal my marrow. They're like, "Oh, look, Daddy, you have marrow, a marrow bone. Can I have that?" Kids love it. Oh kids. yeah. The, Give it to your kids. You'll be shocked. It's so good for them. And, and so we get we make steak and then it, it, take the marrow and you cook the marrow and you put it on top of the steak and you just eat it that way. And yes. oh, that's that just makes me happy to think about it. Me too. It's like, I, I'm telling you, it's like, a, it's like a shopping spree, a marrow shopping spree. I love it. I can't get enough of it. And, you know, when you, as a doctor, when you, when you know what it's actually doing for your body and how it's building and I can just picture it, like just building those cells your blood and it makes your blood you know flow like a river instead of a swamp it's just so healthy and it makes it so rich and it just it's just like i said i mean this it's such a gift i mean i hope more people from listening to this i hope they really 
I hope they really start incorporating that in their diet. It'll make a big difference. It's great for energy. It's great to give you energy and for brain function and a million other things. Uh, f- fully agree. Like it, it's actually worth the trouble it takes to to go make the stuff. Uh, no doubt. It, about it really it. is. Now, I want to do something that we've never done on Bulletproof Radio with you before. Are you up for an experiment with me? Do, do I look like I'm afraid of an experiment? This Italian girl, I'm ready to go. Right, you, you look like you might kick my ass. No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> <laughs> I might. I didn't say I wasn't going to do that. You've had all that bone broth. I'd be like, whoa. All right. So what I'm going to do <laughs> is I'm going to use the Facebook, this thing that Facebook influencers get, and I can do live video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to broadcast live. I'll announce this to like 100 and something thousand people. Uh, if you are listening to this now and you're not following me on Facebook, it's the Dave Asprey personal profile page. I'm going to do this on podcasts every now and then. I'm going to let you ask anything you want of a guest weeks before the podcast actually hits the radio show. So I'm going to hit this live right now and just I'll tell people what we're doing. So here we go. Hey, I am recording live with Dr. Kellyanne Petrucci on Bulletproof Radio. There we go. Hey, everyone. Hey. <laughs> and the first time ever, you can ask any question that you want, and I'm going to incorporate these into the podcast. So as soon as you start asking some questions, putting up some comments, I'm going to read those, and then we're going to discuss your question live. So this will be maybe 10 minutes of the episode. All you've got to do if you like this and you want to be able to ask questions of all the other guests that I have on Bulletproof Radio, all you have to do is follow the Facebook page, and while you're at it, you can follow Dr. Kellyanne's. <laughs> so far, they're saying, we can hear hi. hi I haven't heard fine. any questions fine. about bone broth. Come on, you guys want to know anything about Dr. Kellyanne, celebrity nutritionist? This is your chance. And I'm going to swap the thing around so you can see what, what's going on here. Check this out. This is like a 4K TV, and here we go. We're going to continue our conversation about bone broth until I start getting some good questions. Come on, Dr. guys. Dr. Kellyanne, here I'll switch this around. We need some good questions. <laughs> There's probably like a, a one-minute delay or something on Facebook, so I'm lots sure of people are saying I can hear you still. All right, so... I'm watching this and I'm talking with uh, Kellyanne and all you got to do is ask questions. We were just finishing a discussion about how do you make the ultimate bone broth. Thank you. Uh, And what can you do? Oh, here we go. Kellyanne, this is from Kristen Lewis. Preventing or curing colds with bone broth, like Mm. the old chicken soup kind of model. Well, true or false? Yeah, here's what's interesting. So I wrote a book called Boosting Immunity for Dummies, and I actually had to research this and see, you know, I, I, we can't just say that broths are good for colds. Are they really? And the science is absolutely there that these broths actually reduce not only in the intensity of colds, but the duration. So, you know, when they say this is like natural penicillin, it really is. So yes, the answer is absolutely yes. And if you think about what's actually in the broth, it's easy to figure out why you can do that because nothing is going to build your immune system you know, more than nutrition like this. And it's got everything in there that your body needs. And so your body really responds to this when you have, when you have a cold. So absolutely, I'd say for a cold, this is my go-to. All right. So Hazel wants to know, uh, do you put veggies in your broth and which ones are best? A little earlier on the show, you talked about um, mm-hmm. onions. Uh, you're a fan of onions and carrots and something else. But like, what, what's your, your favorite set of vegetables? Yeah. yeah, that's a great question. So that's what I love about bone broth is that there's so many ways that you can use it. You can use it to replace water and vegetables. You can add it to things for flavors and consommes like they did and you know, they've done, the French have done forever. There's so many ways to use the broth. But in terms of vegetables, what I tell people is the celery, carrots, onions, that, as I said, they're the base. I do have people, though, that say, you know what, I don't like it with the onions. If you cannot use the onions and they like to give it to their pets and they can't give it to their pets when it's got the onion and the garlic in there. So it really depends what you like. But I have to tell you my favorite thing to add to the broth. I love adding a lot of different greens. You can add anything. Just, you know, picture the broth almost like a stock, like a starting point to any soup, any stew, anything. And whatever it is that you like, you can really cook just about anything. I have tried about every vegetable that you can possibly imagine. And they always cook up beautifully, even if you want to, you know, roasted tomatoes, if you want to put kale in there, if you want to put spinach in there, any kind of greens, 
anything really works extremely, extremely well. Uh, it just depends on what your tastes are and what you like to do. And I mentioned this earlier, I actually add lemongrass to almost all of my bone broth because it really gives such a beautiful flavor. It adds such a beautiful flavor. I crack eggs sometimes in my bone broth. So I have bone broth for breakfast. That's always my breakfast. I love it. And so I actually crack eggs in the bone broth. And sometimes I'll have a bone broth that I've made before, the night before, the day before, and it's got vegetables in there. So you really just think of it, think of it like a stock and whatever vegetables that you like in your home, you can add them in there. If you have some in, that you've had just laying around, I've never used a vegetable in bone broth where I've thought, you know what, this just doesn't work for me. This just isn't good. I don't use potatoes or anything like that because I don't like the starchy, the starchiness in there does not work for me. And I also like to use the, the bone broth for a couple of days and it doesn't sit well in the broth when you use any kind of potato. It get the broth, the liquid gets really starchy. So other than that, or in jicama, jicama doesn't work real well because that gets the broth a little starchy as well. So more, uh, less of the more dense carbohydrates and more of the uh, greens and things like that, they work really well. Watercress, watercress is really nice too, by the way. Watercress is a really nice thing to add. The one vegetable that just doesn't work is uh, prickly pear cactus. Well, I haven't tried that. Okay. I got to tell that. And, and, and okra oh, because I'm it turns into it. snot. It. That's disgusting and wrong. Okra has no place on your plate. Ugh. All right. <laughs> well, okra, yeah, that, again, that's one of the denser carbohydrates. They don't tend to roll, roll well in, in the broth. <laughs> Yeah, those are those are just not okay. Plus, cactus is like full of all sorts of nasty. I haven't tried that one, Dave. Only you would say that. You know that. You know that. <laughs> what about slug broth? Just kidding. Uh, a, a couple more questions here. Uh, one is about fish broth. This is from Janina Edgar. Uh, what kind of fish? Cold water, wild caught. Uh, sh should you do fish broth? Uh, so fish broth was actually used in Asian cultures for many years as a postnatal food. So this is supposed to be one of the best things that you can have after, you know, having, uh, after having children. And so the broths that are supposed to be best are the, uh, the more of the cold water, uh, fishes, they work the best. I, I actually, you can actually throw so many different kinds of, of fish and broth. The, the thing I feel about fish broth is that just one fish alone doesn't make the broth taste very good. So in my opinion, if you can use a couple of different types of fish, the type of fish that you like, but what you really want to get in there again is, you know, the, the bones that really is what makes a difference and you want to flavor it you know, however you like to flavor it. But in terms of fish, when it's just one type of fish, it doesn't taste as good as if you add a couple. And so the, the broths that I've had that were made from fish, they've had three, you know, sometimes two, three different types of fish in there. As long as you're getting the bones in there and you're cooking it slow over a long period of time, you're going to get all the benefits and then you just flavor it the way that you want. But in my, in my uh, bone broth book, there's several fish recipes in there that you'll love. What do you, uh, let me flip that around. Uh, what do you think about putting, uh, this is from Alice, uh, pressure cookers. Yeah. Should you yeah. should you put the bones in, or does it save you time? Like, what's the deal with using a pressure cooker? So, for it? pressure cooker is is good if you have a crazy life and a crazy family, and you just have a crazy schedule, and you say, "Dr. Kellyanne, I just have to get this broth in." If you think I'm going to use a stock pot or a crock pot, it ain't going to happen. So, the thing about a pressure cooker is that you can cook it between 15 and 45 minutes. Literally, you can make the broth. Uh, I feel like in order to get this really gelatinous and in order to really get the, all the properties that you really want for me, it would be my last choice. It would be my last choice. I would use the stock pot or the crock pot before I would use the pressure cooker. But I will tell you this again, this is where the practitioner in me comes out. If this is how you can do it and this is what fits in your life and your family and you get the broth and you're using you know, beautiful ingredients in there, it can only help you. It can only help you. So again, the benefits of the bone broth is simply the time factor. And if you can spare the time, I mean, the crock pot, you really can make it in five minutes. I've done it on video many times where you can literally throw bone broth together in five minutes, plug it in before you go to bed at night, you wake up and you have this beautiful broth. 
So the pressure cooker, I'm a little on the fence about, I have to tell you, because it, it's just, I step in the common sense corner of my brain and I think not a whole lot of gelatinous stuff could go on in 15 minutes and in 45 minutes. And it's just, so if it's the only way that you can do it, then you get a yes from me. But I much prefer the, I much prefer the stock pot or the slow cooker. So we've got a couple people on here. One guy says he does 90 minutes in a pressure cooker and gets gelatin. But there's some serious broth hackers on here now. By the way, we're talking with Dr. Kellyanne, who just wrote Dr. Kellyanne's Bone Broth Diet. And this is a live episode of Bulletproof Radio. We're letting you ask a few questions that will be incorporated into the episode. So whenever it goes live on the radio, you'll be able to hear on the podcast some of the stuff. But I just want to make sure I get all the questions that you care about. And one of the, the questions uh, that also came up here was, let's see... Uh, I think we've already answered it a little bit earlier in our own conversation, but a lot of people are saying, you know, what's what's the best way to do it? What are the timetables? And, and I'll say, Dr. Kellyanne just came out with a whole book about bone broth and how to incorporate it and when to use it and the different ways you can make it. I don't think we're going to be able to answer all those, but her book is really legit. It just came out, well, this week right now as we're talking about it. It's worth checking out if you're into this kind of stuff. Um, I have like one recipe for like an Asian flavored uh, bone broth in, in Bulletproof the Cookbook, which by the way, you should buy. And if you wanted to do us both a solid, right now go to Amazon and pick up Bulletproof the Cookbook and the bone broth diet together. And then other people will see that they kind of go together. Uh, Dr. Kellyanne and I are friends and uh, our books came out from the same publisher, Rodale, one week apart. So we're helping each other out. But most importantly, there's huge numbers of recipes in there. And you'll, she'll talk about questions like, okay, do you roast the bones? What's the basic broth? What are the fancy broths? And Dr. Kellyanne, I wanted to ask you about something weird that I learned about with broth. And I've, I've never publicly disclosed this. But You're scaring well, me I've again, Dave. You're scaring me again, Dave. I'm, I'm married to a Swede. Yes. Okay. Yes. Swedish people eat the weirdest crap. I, I just have to say that out loud. And I mean, I, I love Swedish people you and all this stuff. But do you like. You do know that a lot of my training was from a Swiss doctor, Dr. Rao from the Paracelsus Clinic. So I'm very familiar. Well, well that, that's like Switzerland. Yeah. The Swedes get all yeah. mad when you confuse Switzerland and Sweden. Yes. You know that yes. they'll, they'll come to your house now. They're going to hunt you down. <laughs> Same way. If you confuse the Swedish with Norwegians, both sides get mad. You can't even tell who you offended, right? <laughs> all, right. all right. So here's, here's the deal. We have these spot prawns that they're, they swim right outside the house. They're these amazing prawns, like, like this big sometimes, that come for like, like, like locusts of the sea. And then you just fish them out and you eat them and they're delicious. So Lana's like, don't throw away the heads, those are the best part. I'm like, that's gross. But we took all the shells and tails and heads and threw them in a pot and we made a, like a, I don't know, head broth? I didn't know what you call that. So what, what's, the, what's the usefulness of doing that? It's like, so like Why would Swedish people do it? It's so incredibly healthy, it would blow your mind. I mean, if people only really understood what that can do for you, it's because you are getting the best minerals that you can possibly get. You are getting, again, it goes back to that deep nutrition. There's something very special about using these parts and... Uh, it's, it's like nutrition that your body's never seen before. And it just sucks it up in the most amazing way. And zinc is something that we're so depleted in. I used to do something called a zinc tally. And I used to test the zinc because I became really interested. The two things that I became really interested in were vitamin D and zinc. Because I kept seeing these numbers off. I kept seeing the numbers off. So I became really interested. You know, zinc. Why zinc? Why is it this? How low are these numbers going? And so I did it, what was called a zinc tally. And it was found that almost everyone that walked in my door was low on zinc. So you eat things like you're just speaking of, it's loaded with zinc, loaded with zinc. So these are all things that our body is starving for. And when you answer your body's cravings for nutrients, I'm telling you, magic happens. You're like a new person. You're, 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 your brain is functioning and firing and you feel like that feeling like they talk about being in the zone. I mean, this is, this is, it's, it's, anyone can have this. I mean, this is the thing. Anyone can have this. And, and I like how you talk about the bulletproof diet in terms of, you know, this is the precision. This is, the, this is, you know, how you really build the plate and then how you stray from that is your choice. But there is a precision, there is a way. So, you know, it, there is a way to get these answers. And so eating foods like that, those, those historical primal foods, they, they really, uh, they, they jolt the body 
into high nutritional states. So this is cool. Robin Benson, our mutual friend from the Healthy Traveler Summit, who's been a guest on Bulletproof Radio, uh, she just said hi on Facebook. But Ro- hey, Rosalind yeah. Belliard says, if internal organs of fish for broth are good, what about organs from beef and veal? Would they provide the same benefits? Now, I know that eating organs are good for you, but would you throw this in a broth? Like liver broth seems like I would hurl if I ate that. But- so, so here's the thing. So yeah, so here's the thing. Uh, you are talking to someone who is a huge proponent of organ meat that comes from, this is where I do talk about precision in certain foods, that if you cannot get precision, you cannot eat that food. You cannot eat that food. You have to make another choice. And organ meat is definitely one of those things. You have got to get it from a pristine source. So here's what I say. If you put it in the broth, you you better have a taste for it. It's going to really change the flavor and the demeanor of the broth. So it, it's like getting spoonful after spoonful after spoonful of something that could be hitting you over the head every time saying, oh my God. So while I'm a huge proponent of organ meats, and I would love, if, you know, I'd love it if everyone got some in their diet, having it in the broth, it really would be an acquired taste. So for someone like me who has, you know, broth every day of their life and who has organ meats regularly, it may not jolt me as much, but for somebody, if you're trying to get a loved one healthy, you're trying to turn someone on, this is not the way to do it. <laughs> if you want to keep them separate, keep them separate. I've done like a, I'll flip this around. I've done like a raw lamb liver smoothie once. It was, it was truly awful. Yeah. And like you could yeah. choke it down, but like do what I do. You can get dried liver powder capsules. But I do. You just get an ounce of liver a day and you're just completely done with it. Yep. Uh, let's see. People need to lay low with fats. Say what? Okay, never mind. That's not going to be a good question. <laughs> All right. Yeah. People are saying, I can't handle tripe. The only way to eat tripe that I've ever found is if it's the third stomach and it's washed really well and it's grass fed. I ate it in New York at some Japanese place where it was cooked fresh mm. and it was pretty good. Mm. All not, right. not a fan. Here we go. Here's our final question from Valerie and from Carell. They're talking about chicken feet. So what about the different kinds of collagen? Because there's different type one, type two, type three. So why would I make a chicken foot broth? Well, chicken foot, that's going to be the, the, the best collagen that you're going to be able to get. If you can stomach chicken feet, if you can, because I have patients that they say, don't ever tell me to do that again. <laughs> don't, ever, don't ever recommend that again. It's just so loaded with what you need for your body to upbuild this collagen, for your body to mainline this collagen. There's just such a plethora of it in there that that's why we recommend it. Uh, you know, you certainly can get, there's certainly, you're going to have collagen from other parts, but the feet really just has so much in it. And that's why Weston Price talks about it all the time. And that's why, you know, the people are such a proponent of it. And here's what I tell people. If you can stomach it, you can tolerate it. That's great. You stick those suckers in there, go for it. But you're still going to get the upbuilding. Uh, you know, you're still going to, your body's still going to mainline from the other constituents in there. And also, I love what you say. You can also add it in there. You can actually add it in there to the flavor and it tastes fantastic and I love it. And I say anyone who is over, I'd say the age of 35 to supplement with the collagen is really something that I highly, highly recommend. And when you supplement with the collagen, it's so amazing and I love the broth. I have to tell you the broth plus the collagen is like, wow, it really does make such a difference. And you see a difference within, I'm telling you, within days. Your hair, your skin, it's, it's, it's amazing what it can do because you know, we know that the collagen is the glue that, glue that holds us together. So we want this. And so while I say, yeah, the chicken feet, if you can stand it, I'd say absolutely add it in. Absolutely. So I, uh, I do it in, when we make bone broth, we put upgraded collagen in it. And there's one question here about, can I put upgraded collagen in my coffee every morning, my Bulletproof coffee? Yeah, you can. If you do better on collagen every morning, go for it. If you want to do Bulletproof intermittent fasting, don't do it. But that's not our main topic here, but since we're crossing over. By the way, brewing coffee with, collagen, with, uh, um, brewing coffee with bone broth is not good. I've, I've experimented. I've thrown a few coffee beans in with bone broth, I like coffee polyphenols. They just don't go well together. Yeah. When you get fat yeah. when you're trying to brew coffee, the fat extracts things that don't belong in there. and So that is not a good flavor. Dash of vanilla can be okay in there. It's different flavor, but... It's, it's more of a, 
like a mole kind of thing or something. It, it's pretty cool. So I, I think that was our, our last question. Uh, there was one more really cool one in here, but I forgot what it was. And <laughs> you need some of your coffee. You need some bulletproof. Exactly. There's a lot of questions coming in. So thank you for participating, everyone, uh, on, on the thank Facebook you. thing here. Thank you. If you like this, tell us that it worked, because I think I might do this for all the podcasts whenever possible. I'll just, if you're following on Facebook, I'll just say, hey, got questions. It's live, rather than trying to get questions ahead of time, because I'm not that good at that. There's just too much going on. So this would allow me to share some of the answers with you that may not make it into the final cut, and it lets you see if you want to hear the whole interview later when it comes out live on Bulletproof Radio. So that said, I'm going to sign off here. We're going to finish our interview. Have an awesome day. So this was our, our first experiment on doing a, a Facebook thing where you can actually go to the Dave Asprey public figure page, follow it, and then I'll just pop these up. And thanks to the 242 people who left comments and questions, we answered, I don't know, like a dozen of them. And I'm going to edit those into the show. So I'm not sure how many of them will make the final show, but people just got like 20 minutes of chance to interview uh, basically two experts on a topic for free, which is kind of cool. And I think we added some value to them. They heard more about, about Dr. Kellyanne's bone broth diet. And so this is all cool. We talked about all sorts of weird stuff like fish heads. All right. I, I think this worked. If it worked, do me a favor. Go to our Facebook page, go to the iTunes thing, wherever you'd like to leave comments for us. It's all, we're open all over the place. And let me know, like, did you like that? Should we do more of that? It's, it's really helpful because I can morph the show to allow more of this kind of interaction, but only if it's really adding value. And if you didn't like it because you're driving in your car and you felt left out and the questions weren't as good or whatever, tell me that too, so then I can tune this for you. Right now, we've had about 21 million downloads of Bulletproof Radio which is the equivalent of about 32 lifetimes, which means if we're adding value, great. Otherwise, I'm guilty of killing 32 people. And so this show isn't here to waste your time. It's not here for my ego. It's here to get huge amounts of knowledge from world-class experts and just put it out there so everyone can kick more ass. That's really what it's about. There's, you know, there's no charge for this. So just give me the info. That's all I'm asking for. Give me knowledge. Okay, Kellyanne, let's finish yeah. up our interview. Yes, sir. We talked about all the good stuff that bone broth does. We talked about the lining of the gut. We talked about types of collagen. But we didn't talk about one other thing that would have made everyone on Facebook laugh. They're going to have to hear it here. Okay, once I was in Tibet. It sounds like a joke. There's like a penguin walks into a bar in Tibet, but that's not the joke. <laughs> I descended 7,500 feet vertical elevation in one day. And I bruised the collagen, like the cartilage in my knees really badly to the point I couldn't walk for almost a week, like mm. even with walking sticks. And I had a 26 mile, 18,000 foot trek I wanted to do in another 10 days. And I'm on a bus all day, every day. So we stopped in this tiny little guest house along the road. And it's a Chinese food place and I, like with mud walls, like, like very remote. Uh, we're driving this four wheel drive bus thing. So I asked my Chinese friend who was in the ride with me, like, tell, read this menu. And there was a bowl, a thing said bowl of pig's ears. I'm like, that sounds frankly horrifying in every way, but I need collagen. I need cartilage. So I ordered these, imagining like fried pig's ears. And what comes out was a bowl of cold steamed pig's ears. They weren't in soup, nothing shredded, just like big, not This does not surprise me, yeah. And they had a, a mild chili paste on them. So I was like completely horrified, but I was also in pain. So I ordered some hot soup and I dipped them in the hot soup to at least warm them up. And I rah, rah, like like a dog eating pig's ears. And I, I must were they good? They were horrible. Not as bad as chicken's feet, but I must yeah. have eaten like fifteen of them. And I'm sure the cook was laughing like, "Ha ha, you know, dumb Westerner." But I, I, the next morning, my knees were fifty percent better. Of course. Now that means I have to ask: but Should I make? a pig's ear bone broth? Should I make a okay, pork so, bone broth? Like, like hook me up okay, on that so, stuff. <laughs> so, so what if I told you that like the, what you experienced because it had what you need in it, that's typical. It is. Yeah. So like th that's what people, I mean, that's a typical result mm -hmm. because you, it, it, that's just what it does. So you think, you know, you're joking. I swear to God, I think you should make something like that. Heck yeah. Because okay. in 24 hours, you were fifty percent better. Mm -hmm. I mean, is there is there you think Celebrex or anything else on the market is going to do that for you? Absolutely not. It's the, pretty the, unlikely. 
it's pretty unlikely. I mean, these crazy weird foods that, you know, we talk about and even bone broth to people, it seems crazy and weird and it's not. These are foods that have been you know, ingested and consumed for multitudes of years and with a lot of success. And you know, the, this really is true healing. This really is true healing. It's, you know, the crazy things like that, that take joint pain away, that take, you know, all kind of, look, you were in pain. And so many people go through so many things to get out of that situation. And look, look, look how easily it was solved. And yeah, it was gross. So you have to come up with something where you take the gross out. If you all can right. somehow degrossify it, so, I'll be your first. I'll be your first customer. If I was at, <laughs> if I was at home to degrossify that, I'd throw them all in the blender and just make a smoothie. That would have been so much easier just to chug a pig's oh, ear. Yeah, that's, pig's ear smoothie. That's a chug of- <laughs> yeah, just a little bit of rosemary. Oh yeah, I'm down. <laughs> I'm down. All right. On that note, we're up on the end of the show. So there's a question that you've heard before, and that is, if someone came to you tomorrow and said, I want to perform better at everything I do in life, what are the three things I should know the most? Yeah. So, well, you know one. One is you've got to incorporate something in your life every day because it's what you do every day that makes a difference. Okay. So that's when I tell people when I listen to what they're eating or what they're doing and I hear, I, I see a pattern. I know that that pattern is having a serious effect on their life. So you want to start regular patterns of things that are serving you and moving you upwards or moving you towards health or towards whatever your goals are. So for me, I love bone broth. I think incorporating bone broth into your diet, into your life every day, so important. It's so important. You have to remember that when you have things like if you're you know, listening and you say, you know, I've, I've got this high blood pressure, I've got, you know, this, my, my sugar's out of whack, understand that your body is reacting exactly as it should Mm -hmm. for the environment that it's in. And there are things that you can do about that. So you have to really lock down and understand that there are answers, there are solutions. I know Dave has provided so many of them for so many people as as have I, and they are out there. So just remember, if you're suffering with something, there are solutions. And so a really great solution is to what you do every day. So incorporate something like broth into your diet. The second thing I will tell you is that everyone listening, and I know that this is hammered over and over on this particular show, but it's mm-hmm. really important. And I'll say it from my perspective is healthy fats. And I still hear in my practice to this day, I still hear it to this day, fats really, I, and I'll tell you, mm-hmm. to burn fat, you have to eat fat. And I'll say that again, to burn fat, you have to eat fat. It's really important. And that goes, I mean, that's just the the exterior stuff. That doesn't have anything to do with brain capacity and all these other things that are so vitally important. So understand, number one, the environment, however your body's reacting, it's the environment that you're putting yourself into. You have to come up with that one thing, that one thing that you can do to make a difference that's going to change the environment, that's going to change the way your body is responding every day. The second thing is healthy fats. The third thing... I would say would be to have a slim mindset. And that is to understand the basic primal needs that we all have to feel good. And I call it again, the slim mindset. And that's to feel safe, loved, important. And that's how we feel motivated. And whatever you do in life, whomever you let in your circle, I call it having an inner doorman, having that doorman, letting people in your life that are going to help you feel these things, safe, loved, important motivated, managing your yeses, understanding that saying no sometimes is as important as yes. All of these things, I talk about this in the book. I talk about this in the Bone Broth book. These are as important as your foods. So understand having the right mindset, those six inches between your ears, is as important as everything else we've talked about. Kellyanne, thanks again for being on the show. Your book is Dr. Kellyanne's Bone Broth Diet. And what's the URL people could go to to find you? Yep. So drkellyann.com. It's D-R-K-E-L-L-Y-A-N-N, drkellyann.com. You'll find tons of every, I write for many journals. Uh, you know, I, I give okay. great information and uh, you'll enjoy it. Drkellyann.com. Thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it, uh, Kellyann. It's, it's uh, always an honor. Okay. I just hope everyone can also enjoy my PBS special, my public television special, 21 Days to a Slimmer and Younger You. It's playing across the country. 90% of the country is now viewing it. Beautiful. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. If you appreciated today's episode or you just want more collagen in your life, make yourself some bone broth. It's really good. Dr. Kellyanne's book has tons of recipes and good reasons and the science behind it. You can also do what I do 
which is, I take upgraded collagen, which is from grass-fed cows. It's enzymatically processed and pre-digested, but it's the same stuff that you'd find in bone broth. And I put that in my Bulletproof coffee, or I put it in other meals. It has no flavor in your coffee. It, it, it's invisible. And it has a unique amino acid profile compared to like a whey protein or even compared to steak. And I put that in my bone broth as well. When I make desserts, I use collagen gelatin, which has twice as much protein per unit of gelling power. So these are two things I've come out with that have been a core part of me maintaining my, my health. And when you look at the science behind eating collagen and just consuming it like this, it, there's overwhelming evidence that this should be part of your diet and it probably isn't. So make yourself some bone broth, and especially when you don't make bone broth, give yourself some collagen in the form of upgraded collagen or collagen, and you'll be happy you did. Have an awesome day.